You know, as a service technician, there are certain components on a washing machine that you're going to have to test sometimes. Today we're going to go over shift actuators, and I'm going to show you how to test them. A shift actuator has two components on it. One is the tachometer, and one is the actual shift arm that manipulates a splutch underneath your modern Whirlpool-style washing machines. And I'm going to show you how to make some test cords so that you can actually turn the washing machine on its back, plug in a test cord, and actually observe the uh, actuator doing its job. Hey, today we're going to be going over these shift actuators. These things, uh, you'll find them, they're common on Whirlpool washing machines and, and underneath it. And what, what you need to do is we need to be able to test this. There's two components on a, on a shift actuator. Uh, you can, you can see these two little posts here. There's a wheel that, that passes uh, between these, these two posts and, and it gives the, uh, it, the, the tachometer on the machine is what it is. So anyhow, anyway, there's two different varieties on the Whirlpool and you can test this. I, I've got a video right up here that you can uh, view and it, and it shows you how to test the tachometer part. But you also need to, to be able to test the motor on it. So to do this, if you're a service technician, you should be able to find uh, these uh, the, the plugs for the thing on an, on an old machine. Just just cut this off, and I'll, we'll we'll go over how to, to wire this to be able to plug this in. We're going to use these cords that I got off the internet with an inline switch on it, which makes it convenient to to do this. So, I've researched this and these, these plugs, it's not obvious, you have uh, two, four, six, you have six wires on this shift actuator and only two of them run this motor. So you have to trace these two wires back down and I've done this and I've come come to the conclusion that it's uh, the brown wire and the black white wire. It's a black white wire with a white stripe in it. And they're going to be, if you're, if you're holding the, the device with the motor facing you, it's going to be the, these two outer uh, pins. The two outer pins on the on the on the black uh, shift actuator. That's the, the ones you want to display. And it's going to be a 120 volt connection. And for for this one, I've run it down to the first the first pin. If you're looking with the motor facing, it's going to be the first and the third pin from the right. So. All the way to the right, you take the first pin and the third pin. And don't mix that up because if you do the first and the second, you will smoke this device after, because I have done it. And these aren't cheap. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our, our pigtail that we cut from An old machine, and we're going to get rid of these extra wires. Now, the best thing to do you can you can just clip them off with a pair of dikes, but the best thing to do is take like a uh, a punch, not a punch, but a pick, uh, and you can you can run the pick right down the inside of uh, that slot, right in the middle and it will disengage your, the uh, spade plug connector that's in there and you can pull that pull that out but for convenience sake today what we're going to do is is just clip these wires off so remember I need the first and third as I'm looking at it like this and this device goes in so I need the brown one get rid of this one and looks like a darker brown one. So this is tan and brown. So we'll clip this one off. 
and we'll keep the third one and we'll clip the rest of these off and like I said the best the best scenario is to get get down in there with a pick and get the spade plug connectors out of there I get me old wire splicing tool stripping tool out or you use whatever you, you'd like to and <clears throat> you want to take your cord and it comes like this you can buy these off the internet it comes comes like this with, with with just the male end on it. And you can use any kind of splicers you'd like. Um, I'm going to use inline splicers where I can put a piece of uh, heat shrink over the top of it. And you can get heat shrink splicers like these right here. And they become watertight when you, when you shrink them down. And it doesn't matter which which uh, wire you connect to this because it's alternating current. Current's going one way, uh, one cycle, and one way the next cycle. And I I ordered a good pair of uh, crampers, but they haven't come in yet. Uh, my old crampers gave up on me, so I'm just going to use some dikes, and I'm going to carefully squeeze that together. I don't want to I don't want to cut it. I'm going to carefully squeeze it together. And before I do this, I need to put some heat shrink on because you can't do it afterwards. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be. It's going to be too small, I think. I'll use this bigger piece. Hey, my workplace gets cluttered real fast. I can lay this aside. Be sure you twist these wires to, so they don't kind of bunch up when you take them out. And again, this is the wrong tool to use for this. You really need a good pair of clippers if you crimpers if you're going to do something like this often. Okay. So we fit this, this one in. And again, twist your wire real well. And hold it in place. Now I'm not squeezing these dikes I'm just squeezing them just enough to crimp that, that metal tube inside. Now if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you don't have access to uh, the plug from the, the wiring harness on an old machine, you can take uh, two shielded spade plug connectors and do the same thing. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, so if you took these two, these these are two shielded spade plug connectors and you can find them at your local uh, big box store. If you take these on this on this one and be sure the motor faces you and you can you can connect these on the first and on the third pin in there. Be sure the motor's facing you, the first and third pin, and you can connect these to, to a power source. And that way you can test this one. Unfortunately, you can't do the same on this one. 
unless you find some some sort of uh, see there's a, there are pins in here and in this the interface is a hollow tube that fits over these pins in here so you'd have to find something maybe another pin something that you could wedge in in there to to do the same thing but you can do it on this type uh, actuator but not this one Okay, so now I have this, and I want to I want to heat shrink it. So, so I've got my trusty heat gun, and first thing I want to do is heat shrink these connections. I'm gonna put this heat gun on, on high heat, kind of cold in the shop today. What heat shrink does, this plastic is manufactured so when you apply heat to it, the molecules squeeze together and they, they shrink. They shrink against the, the insulation part of the wire. And you'll see that it, it even takes a grip and makes your connection a little bit stronger. Sure if I had a little bit longer piece that goes in on these, these ends, and you can you can find longer pieces out right there. And this is just what I have in the shop. <clears throat> okay, we've got that done. Now let's test it. Plug it in. <clears throat> and let's see what happens. Okay, you can see our little motor is, is working the actuator. And the way this works in the real world. When this is hooked to the to the washing machine, this actuator, this little pin on the actuator, interfaces with the splutch, and it shifts your washing machine from agitate to to the spin mode. And there's a switch right here uh, that when this gets to 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 the one point, the switch activates, and it tells the control board to, to quit sending power to the the little motor. The little motor only works in one direction and it cycles over and over and over. It just <clears throat> it just has a, a way of turning the switch on and off. So we know that this, this uh, shift actuator is good. This part of it is good. And again, if you want to check the tachometer, you can do that using the service um, mode on your, uh, on your washing machine. So, let's um, make a test switch for the black style. Okay, so let's do this black one now. And remember, if you hold this motor facing you, the, the power connector is going to be the two pins that 
and that power of the motor are going to be on the right side. Now I have found, and, and different model machines have different wiring schematics. So I've already cut this one, uh, and on this particular connector, the the black and white wire and the and the brown wire are the power power to the motor, and it connects like this. Now I have seen other machines that have uh, blue and red for the power over here. And it's always going to be, the power to the motor is always going to be on the right side with the motor facing you and the, and, the, and, the, and the plug side up. So I've already uh, clipped these wires as, as close as I can over here. So we're going to go ahead and wire up our, our test cord with the power switch on it. So don't always trust the colors of the wires, on, uh, especially on because different models use different uh, color codes. I don't know why they should standardize everything. The only thing that's standard that I know of is green is for ground. And again, I'm going to use dikes, and I'm not using the correct tool, but they work a lot better than my, my, my old crimpers. And I do have some new crimpers on order, but they're not here, and I want to get this video out this weekend. So now, let's get a piece of heat shrink and put on there. And I also want to make sure that heat shrink covers everything, so I'm going to cut my wires a little bit shorter. Right here. Sure to put your heat shrink on first because it won't go over all that other stuff. I'll barely go over this. Let me get my heat done.
And again, the thing I like about these are they, they have this little light that tells you when your switch is on or off. So let's plug it into our shift actuator. And turn it over. Let's plug, let's turn it in. And can you see the little motor turning? And this is about the only way that you can test this uh, visually. If you turn your, if you can turn your machine over, unplug the, turn the machine over on its back, unplug the shift actuator, plug into your test cord, and turn it on and see if it shifts your uh, splutch in and out of gear. If it's not, if it's not shifting your splutch, then you need to replace the shift actuator, and. Like I said, there's two there are two um, components in this. One of them is the tachometer, which is done by this. Where there's a wheel inside the gearbox that passes between here. It's got gaps in it that must be an electric eye in here that that counts those gaps or or, or shows the the RPM at times the 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 uh, speed of the of the wheel and this part which actually does the work so if either one of these is bad you have to change the, the shift actuator and the, it's the easy way to, to test the tachometer is on the using the service diagnostic mode on your on your uh, machine once you plug it in, you need to give it a minute or two for the capacitors on the control board to load. Sometimes you can hear a click or two. All right, let's try it one more time. One, two, three, back one, back. We have all our lights flashing. So we're in service diagnostic mode and we need to put it into the RPM or the tachometer test. The tachometer test is when the done light and the wash light is on, and we always go clockwise to, to advance to these features. So there we have it, and you push start to begin it, and then I open the drum, and I'm going to slowly spin the drum, and look at there, we've got it fixed. Now we have the tachometer working. Success. That's about all you need to know about this type of shift actuator. Whether yours are good or not, you can you can now take a test cord and determine that. And you can use the, uh, the diagnostic mode on your machine to test the, the other component on it. If you like this video, I'd pre appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you a lot. Thanks for watching.